Robert Varish had found a treasure, but didn't realize it until 18 years later. For over 20 years, Varish, long addicted to rock hunting, combed the Mojave Desert north of Los Angeles. Days were spent working as an engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, but come the weekend, he'd be out there searching for pieces to add to his collection. Oh yeah, I've, I've been interested in rocks all, and minerals all my life, and uh, I can't say why, it's just like, it's, that's what you're going to be interested in, that's going to be your interest for the rest of your life. But in recent years, Rockhound Varish stopped looking down and is now looking up at the sky. He has focused his collecting on the rarest of all mineral finds, fallen meteorites. I started uh, becoming interested, interested in meteorites when I saw a fireball on the way back from a trip from the desert. Uh, that got me into the, the subject. Meteorites lose about perhaps up to 95% of their mass coming through the atmosphere. And sometimes all that's left is just smoke. And oftentimes uh, what's left is just a small remnant of what originally hit the top of the atmosphere. But uh, some meteorites observed to hit cars, many hit houses, um, but most of course fall in uninhabited areas and are not observed. When a meteorite first hits the atmosphere, it begins to glow, heating the air around it, encountering more resistance as it speeds downward into denser layers of atmosphere. These frictional stresses can break the meteorite into little pieces. The fragments start diverging as they finally fall to the ground, forming an elliptical pattern, which we call a strewn field. This one meteorite here, Holbrook, fell in Arizona in uh, 1912, and about 14,000 pieces were recovered. These pieces just littered the ground uh, all over the place, and they were just picked up by bushel baskets. And some meteorites are just observed as a single piece, and others have fragmented into even more than 100,000 specimens coming down. Varish couldn't possibly be looking for anything more difficult to find. Most meteorites that survived the superheated trip through the atmosphere hit the ground so hard that they bury themselves on impact. Meteorites are very rare on the surface of the Earth. You could go all day long in most regions uh, and never find one. So you want to look in areas where they're likely to be more concentrated, in areas where there are very few terrestrial rocks to be observed, and so any rock that stands out could be a meteorite. Varish looks in the desert, where meteorites, which are usually dark in color, are a lot easier to spot, at least those visible on the surface. The others are located with the use of metal detectors, 